Hi guys, so in a recent video you'd have seen me make this, yeah, a little dungeon display sort of box case diorama for all my miniatures. Uh, but I'm hoping to be moving later on this year and one of the main things I'm looking for is, well, somewhere that I can make a studio. Um, whether it's a garage, spare room or even up in a loft. And one of the things I want to do in this sort of studio, uh, I want it to be a gaming room as well. But I really want to sort of make it look like, well, like this sort of dungeon scene. Um, so a combination of a dungeon scene and a tavern. So what I'm going to be doing over the next sort of few weeks, months, whatever it might be, is start making bits and pieces so I can make myself my very own dungeon layer to use as a studio and obviously where I can play games. So like most things, we have to start somewhere. Um, and obviously because I'm still in a small place at the moment, I'm going to start making some smaller items, well, smaller, larger items, uh, in preparation for when I do finally move and I say, yeah, I get to be a big kid and make some big things so I can turn a probably a shed into, well, a gaming room, come studio, uh, come dragon's lair tavern kind of thing. And yeah, starting off small and simple, I'm starting off with this. Uh, yeah, good old wall torch as well. Every dungeon sort of has these kind of things. Um, so yeah, so this, obviously, you would have seen in that little uh, diorama I just showed you, was one of these small sort of torches. Um, and I've supersized it. Supersized it, and obviously I've made it so it sort of glows, flashes, uh, or tries to be like a candle, I guess. So the plan is to make up, well, however many of these I need, um, to sort of make myself my own dungeon. Yes, I know, I am old, and I'm a big kid. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to do this kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've been talking ages for about the fact that I don't have a lot of room where I currently am. Uh, but yeah, so later on this year, I am hoping to move. And I say, I want to get somewhere with a spare room uh, or a shed or a garage or somewhere where I can be a big kid, make more mess and make bigger items. Um, I know this channel is obviously called The Miniature Hobbyist. Uh, but yeah, I want to start making some sort of life-size objects. Uh, probably more sort of like D&D themed or Warhammer themed. Because obviously my I do love space and I do love uh, the good old times. Well, I don't know about the good old times. Uh, of Dungeons and Dragons. So yeah, I'm going to start off with this torch. Um, and yeah, let's go for the process of me making this and being a big kid. <laughs> Alright, let's crack on and get into the video. So those lovely people over at Eligu recently sent me one of their brand new printers, uh, which is out today, and that's a Saturn IV Ultra. Um, and yeah, again, this is where I am such a big kid. Things turn up um, and I get super excited. Because I'm often co contacted by companies who say they're going to send me stuff. Um, and then I kind of forget they're going to send me stuff. And then the doorbell goes and lo and behold, bits and thing pieces turn up. Uh, and yeah, I'm like a kid on Christmas morning, um, yeah, getting to unwrap and play with a new toy. So I'm going to go through the the full sort of setup process with this uh, this printer. So if you are new to printers, yeah, hopefully this will be of some help to you. Although, to be honest, um, the setting up of new printers these days really is plug and play. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've only been into 3D printers for the last, well, last three years or so. Um, and they certainly have come on leaps and bounds in both, well, the looks of the things, because these just look glorious, um, but as well as the ease in which you can get these out of the box and you can be printing within minutes. Um, well, I say minutes, obviously it does take a little while to uh, get things out of the box, as these things certainly are securely packaged, which obviously is a good thing because you won't want anything breaking en route. Um, but yeah, take everything out of the box. I say, so this thing literally is out today, guys. Uh, there'll be a link down below where you can check out more details about this. So yeah, they sent me this for free, which was absolutely awesome of them. Again, this um, they're not paying or sponsoring or any of that kind of stuff. Anything I do here, yeah, my own words, my own faults. Uh, but the thing is, though, <laughs> I love 3D printers. They are just the best thing ever. Um... And I say, I can't wait to get a studio and be able to have like a setup of these. So as mentioned, yeah, this really is nicely packaged with everything securely in place. Uh, and something, yeah, I love doing, peeling off all the protective films. Um, I don't know why, but I do get a lot of satisfaction from that. So a nice size build plate with this. Um, and it's got one of the connectors 
that I absolutely love. So it's this, it's just a little flick up, um, slide the, uh, the build plate onto it, and then flick down, which is so nice, so easy to do, there's no screwing involved there. So yeah, lovely and simple. Um, I say this thing, uh, there is no sort of messing about setting it up. It is just a case of putting the build plate on, putting a resin tank in, uh, putting some power in, obviously, um, and then turning it on. And this is where this thing does all the setup itself. So whenever you move this, and when you first turn it on, it goes through its own little setup stage, which is just awesome, because what it's actually doing is it does a self-leveling, uh, which is really cool. So whenever you move this, um, yeah, it'll level itself, which is just great. Because uh, it's really weird, because when I put the, um, the, the resin vat in, uh, the resin vat went in, and it was a bit of an angle, which I thought was a bit weird, um, until it went through this setup stage, and then you can actually see the uh, the resin vat moving. You'll be able to see a bit more of that coming up soon. Um, because say this prints in a very different way to a lot of other printers. Um, yeah, this is the first one that does something well different. So for this, I'm going to use some of this Syria Tech, and it's the white resin. Um, awesome stuff, this. So yeah, check out the links down below to Syria Tech. And the reason I'm going for the white resin is because I want to put some LEDs inside it. So obviously, being white resin. Yeah, the LEDs will flash inside and you'll be able to see it. So I have used Serial Tech quite a few times. Uh, and yeah, lovely stuff. Works really, really well. Um, as you saw on this, this is the fast one. Although the settings I'm using, I'm just using the bog standard settings that came with the printer. So as you would have seen at the very beginning, yeah, the diorama I've used, I've got little torches in there. Uh, but obviously these torches are, well, they're minute. Uh, when I say minute, the thing's probably about half an inch. So I need to drag it into my uh, my software, and I'm using Chichibox Basic. Um, as you can see there, yeah, it shows the well, it shows the build plates that it's going to be going onto on the good old um, Saturn IV Ultra by Eligu. Uh And yeah, this little thing, it's minute. Um, well, it's about half an inch, I think. So obviously, I need to supersize this. And again, this is where I always say I love 3D printers because you can print things whatever size you want. Um, and yeah, I think mean, this is the first time I've really blown something up so much bigger. Um, obviously you can blow things up as big as you want within the sort of parameters of the printer. So as you can see though, any bits that are in red, these are going outside the dimensions of the printer. But not to worry, I'm only going to uh, take this in here because I need to sort of chop it up a little bit. Uh, well, I'm going to hollow it out actually because obviously I want to put an LED on the inside. So I'm going to hollow it out, I can make the, uh, the thickness of the walls. Um, press the button and again the software very easy to use as in if I can use it Yeah, anyone can use it because I'm certainly not technically minded with these kind of things So there we go. It's nicely hollowed out and I say it's a big old size now And also you can check to see how it looks when it's hollowed out um, As I say because my plan is to be able to stick the battery and the LEDs inside this because I want it all nice and hidden uh, and yeah, everything looks good there. But the other thing I want to do is I want to sort of cut the thing in half. Because say, at the moment it is too big to fit on the build plate in one. So again, using some real basic software, um, Tinkercad. This is free. Uh, it's online and again, wait, say it's free. So it's perfect because I love free stuff. Um, very basic what I can do with this. Um, but again, this is nice, easy software for people who aren't that technically minded. And all I'm going to do in this is basically cut this thing so I have the torch holder uh, and the flame as being two sort of separate entities. Again, this just makes it easier for me to print them out in one go at a nice big size. And it's because I want to be able to get the, um, well, the battery pack and the LEDs inside. So the plan is to have this on a wall, uh, but I can still just obviously turn it off and on. Well, when needed. So to cut this thing in two, yeah, it really is just a case of making a box. Um, as you can see, it's like a clear box. So basically, when you add these together, it will take away the clear bit from the other bit. So while that's going ahead, I just want to say a big shout out and thank you to all my lovely patrons. As it's with your continued support that I'm able to do this full time. So many thanks. So there we go, that's the holder done. And as you can see, yeah, you can see the inside and it is nice and hollowed out. So simply to do the other side, I just undo, well, I've obviously saved that as the base. Then I undo what I've just done. And then I can move the box to the other side um, and then do the same sort of process. Obviously, again, making sure I don't click the whole thing. So yeah, whizzing it across, connecting it together. 
Uh, this is where obviously sometimes I do make mistakes because I kind of rush, especially when I'm trying to film myself as well. So as you'll see here, yeah, I've cut it, but there's a little bit left over on the other side. So quickly undo that um, and then make sure I've got everything covered that I want to, uh, to delete um, and then do the same thing again. So yeah, we all make mistakes. And again, I always give this as an excuse when I'm filming myself. Yeah, sometimes I forget to, uh, well, what I'm doing really. <laughs> Anywho, so yeah, that um, that cut off the, the bottom bit nicely. So I've just got the flame. Again, then save the flame as well. Funny enough, flame. Um, and then I can bring both those bits back into Chichi Box. And again, this is where there's been vast improvements in both the machines and the software. Um, I can use this to make all the supports. Um, in the past, whenever I've done supports with Chichi Box or any other kind of other software, it's sometimes a bit hit and miss. Uh, whereas recently, definitely over the last sort of good few months, uh, yeah, Chichi Box, the, uh, the support settings have just been perfect. Um, and yeah, there's definitely, well, I can't even think when I last had a failure, which is awesome. Uh, because obviously every time you get a failure, it means it's wasted time and wasted resin. So there we go, everything's well supported and now it's just a case of, well, sticking it on a USB and taking it over to my lovely new printer. And this really is where, yeah, this is just plug and play. Um, I've had to do no settings, no changes, no nothing really. Um, yeah, just stick the USB in, push a few buttons, away it goes. Right, so in a second guys, you're going to see, uh, well, if you've had a 3D printer, how different this 3D printer is when it prints compared to the others. I think when it first started doing it, I was like, uh, what's happening? <laughs> but what does happen is the resin vat goes up and down. Um, yeah, I'm not sure why they've done this. I mean, I'm guessing it perhaps works better for the, um, well, for the FEP and everything else. Um, I'm not too sure. You'd have to ask someone from Eligu. Uh, but yeah, the resin vat goes up and down as well as the build plates obviously gradually moving up. Um, definitely weird to see for the first time, because I say, it, it's not normally this way. Normally it is purely just the uh, the build plate that sort of moves up each time. Uh, but yeah, the resin vat goes up and down. Obviously I've speeded up a little bit every now and then, so it is going a bit faster than it, uh, it should be, but it's still weird to see. Uh, but as you can see, yeah, the print is coming out perfectly. So both the resin from Syria Tech and the Eligu Saturn Ultra 4, uh, yeah, working gorgeously. Um, obviously, I only had the cover open for a little bit each time I was filming. Uh, the resin vat does heat up, which is perfect, because then cold days, it's going to work awesomely. So yeah, as I saw there, the settings, I've left them as they are. Um, I probably could have sped it up, but um, yeah, if it works, why change it? And there we go. Uh, yeah, I love it. Um, and it's nice to print out something big because say normally I don't but again this is where I love this little release at the top you can do it all with one hand there's no screw to take out or to lose or to hide um, yeah the whole thing comes off perfectly uh, and I love it as you saw there yeah I did have a tray underneath because there was obviously a little bit of resin still probably inside the holder there um, I'm not wearing gloves at the moment but you'll see me wear gloves in a minute so whenever you do touch this stuff, yeah, take your own health and safety precautions because this stuff isn't good for you. Um, and yeah, you wouldn't really want it on your skin. So yeah, it's come out great. Um, and again, I just love the fact that this thing, and I've printed loads of these candles out when using them in dioramas, but also they are tiny, teeny sort of little things. So to print something out uh, a lot, lot bigger than it should be is just wonderful. And I say the fact that this is something that I will be sticking on my wall um, well, when I can get my own little shed, garage, workshop, whatever I'm going to get. Um, and yeah, I can't wait to turn it into, I say it's going to be a cross between the inside of a tavern and kind of like a dungeon. So it's going to have like dungeony walls, but tavern looking style. Um, and yeah, it's going to be a gaming room come studio, workshop, painting area, everything really. Um, and yeah, I absolutely can't wait. So the supports are coming off just perfectly, which is absolutely awesome. As you can see though, this thing is really slimy. And again, this is where you definitely need to be wearing gloves because yeah, this stuff isn't good for you. So this does obviously go into a cure and wash station just to clean off all this resin, but we'll do that in just a second. 
Um, and say so these supports, yeah, they they really have come out really well. Definitely nice and firm and secure. It's always a shame though when it does have so many supports because obviously all you're thinking about is well that's a lot of wasted res resin. Uh, but one thing I do love about this and that's the sound. So let's hear what it sounds like. And I'm not sure why, but yeah, I find that a very satisfying sound. <laughs> so everything's come out perfectly. Yeah, it went in the wash and cure system. So as you can see, don't need gloves anymore. It's nice and dried and yeah, good to hold. Uh, yeah, it was just a case of taking out the supports that were inside the uh, the candle there. Because I want to stick in some LEDs and the battery pack inside. Because I want it to be on the wall flickering away. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I don't want to be able to see any wires or, well, any leads, batteries, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and there we go. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, obviously, I want this, though, to be able to connect really easily. Um, so the best way, yeah, <laughs> magnets. Uh, again, any excuse for me to get magnets involved because I, I just think they're the best thing ever. Well, after probably 3D printers. Um, so yeah, I'm going to use some magnets in this. So I'm trying to sort of line up, well, I've drawn little lines there with my pencil just so I can put holes in well either part and then stick in these uh, these little magnets. Um, these are three millimeters by two millimeters. Uh, although you will see in a second, um, well I won't spoil it, but you'll see in a second, I might change it. So I'm just using a, using a cheap Dremel tool here. Uh, yeah, good old Amazon, kind of get everything off Amazon really. Um, I've got an affiliate link down below guys. So if you do use Amazon, it'd be great if you could use my affiliate link first. Just click on that. Um, and then go and click on whatever it is or search whatever it is you want to buy. It doesn't cost you anything, but again, I get a few pennies from it, um, which obviously just helps me, well, continue to make videos like this. So that's the holes drilled in both sort of both parts. And yeah, fortunately enough, they do sort of just about line up, which is great. Because say, because I haven't really sort of measured things too much there. Um, yeah, it's just a bit of a rough pencil line to try and sort of match things up. Um, and then yeah, a bit of well dab of glue, and then my good old little uh, little magnet sort of holder here. So I've got two ends of this. So I've got one obviously this one with the red bit on, another one with a black bit on, just so I get the polarity right, so things well they attract rather than repel each other. So I put magnets in both pieces, uh, but found they weren't very strong or not strong enough for well the intended use here. So I pulled out some bigger magnets, um, and yeah, the bigger magnets as you can see there so much more stronger because well they're bigger so they have more I'm not sure what the word is um, I, well I could look it up but I'm not going to um, yeah they attract each other a lot more so I re <laughs> redid the thing um, yeah I did try and film it but it's very difficult to film it while doing it because well I was kind of making it up as I going along uh, but yeah so what I'm gonna do here is I've done the bottom half the top half I've kind of cut out a bit more of an area um, and yeah, I want to make sure these line up perfectly, which they do. But as you can see, yeah, because these magnets are so much bigger, they kind of protrude a lot further than the smaller ones. So, smart brain idea here. I'm using some good old clear resin, uh, the good old UV resin over the top. Um, just as this is going to act like a glue, um, it'll also cover the magnet perfectly. But being clear resin, yeah, the LED will still shine through it just as nice as it will through the, uh, the white resin. Uh, and there you go, yeah, not too bad a bodge job. And the good thing is, these things attract perfectly. So much so, yeah, you can shake this thing and they're not coming apart, which is kind of what I wanted. If anything, yeah, it's, it's not a struggle to put them apart, but it is nice and tight, which is just awesome. So now we can go to the fun bit, and yeah, that's the painting, just to make these look, well, a bit more like what they should be looking like. Um, and I say these things, I probably could have found candles that were smoother looking, but I love the look of these because they almost gave me the feel of the retro sort of, is it 8 bit, 16 bit games? Um, not quite Minecraft, but because these are a bit blocky, uh, but I kind of like that because obviously I am old, I am retro, and yet I had a ZX81 back in, well, funny enough, 1981 was my first sort of, uh, well, computer gaming console thingy. Yeah, good old ZX81, Spectrum, then a BBC. I'm waffling on about nothing now, so let's get back to this. Um, yeah, so I'm doing a bit of dry brushing. Um, I, this is a lovely way of doing sort of aged looking metal. So the thing's primed in black first. Um, and then, yeah, a bit of dry brushing. 
Um, and I just find this looks so much nicer than painting this like a solid silver because it'll just look too, well, too new, too shiny and all the rest. Um, but yeah, dry brushing is obviously, well, I love dry brushing as much as the speed painting kind of stuff. Um, so although you will see me use some dipping inks in a moment. And yeah, nice and simple, nice and quick. Again, two words I love using, simple and quick. Um, yeah, perfect. <laughs> so yeah, I would say I'm going to make quite a few of these. So again, I want to make it so it is nice and easy to sort of get them done, get them painted. Uh, because I think ideally I would probably need, I don't know, maybe about a dozen of these, depending on what sort of size room I get. So I'm also going to do a bit of dry brushing with white, just because this sort of top bit, um, yeah, I'm sort of seeing this as though it's been made from wood. So yeah, I'm going to dry brush with white, and then use a good old brown sort of dipping ink over the top. Um, yeah, just to make it look like it is like a, a wooden sort of holder that's in a metal sort of holder. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, yeah, because I can't think of anything else to say on that one. But um, yeah, so I love how this looks. Um, and yeah, making this up does get me really excited now about making some bigger stuff. Um, and something I've always wanted to make is some sort of swords. Uh, some 3D printed swords or made swords made out of wood. I'm not too sure yet. Or foam. But uh, yeah, so this miniature hobbyist channel, you are going to see some, say, real size bits and pieces being made up. Um, but I guess the one thing that I would absolutely love to have or make, and that is some full-size armour. Um, we're talking good old knight armour. So good old helmet, shoulder pads, breastplate, all the rest. So yeah, maybe one day. Again, when I've got more room, because that's always what it's about, having room. So with the flame, yeah, going to do a bit of, um, well, a bit of painting obviously here, with dipping inks. Um, love these stuff. Plus this obviously is going to go on nice and thin which means the LEDs inside are going to shine through really, really well. So yeah, a combination of three different colours here, starting with the yellow, then going to work up to the sort of the orange in the middle, um, and then the red for the very top, trying to blend them in as I kind of go. So as you can see, yeah, I'm using a big brush. Uh, well, it's actually the, um, the dry brush brush, because I don't really have any sort of normal big brushes, uh, but this one works perfectly. So I'm kind of working fairly fast here because I want the colours to blend into each other. So I kind of want them to be, well, still wet when the next one goes in. But the other good thing about the other uh, different inks, they don't react in any kind of way. So if the paint was dried first and you go over the top with, well, another sort of different ink colour, um, yeah, you can blend them in perfectly. They don't react. They don't go all funny and weird. Um, and yeah, it just works really, really well. So yeah, so I say, simple little paint job here. Again, nice, quick, simple. Um, yellow to orange, then to red. Um, and yeah, pretty much job done. I did go over and give this a couple of coats because when I first did this, it was almost too sort of translucent. Um, so especially this, the white resin. I love the white resin. So um, yeah, check it out from Syria Tech, the white resin. Um, I'm gonna be using this again more, mainly because I love obviously the fact you can put LEDs on the inside and light things up which is just yeah amazing so um yeah look out for more more white resin use with leds flashing away and there we go that's all painted and ready and i say the magnets yeah i can't fault magnets at all um definitely glad i went with the larger ones because say these are nice and powerful and yeah this thing isn't coming off or going anywhere which is just great. And now, yeah, time to get the uh, the LEDs in. So I've gone for a cheap little pack. Again, no surprises where I got these from. Good old Amazon. Pack of about, I think it's about 12 for about eight pound. And yeah, the great thing with these is three modes. So you've got the fast flashing mode, a slower flashing mode, and then a constant on. Or I guess four modes if constant off. <laughs> um, and then yeah, it really is a case of shoving it all in. So this is where, again, I love the software that you can hollow out items um, as, yeah, it gives you the opportunity to make, well, a whole variety of things. So say the um, the LEDs are going to go into the one end and the battery pack can fit in the top of the sort of the holder there. Uh, well, it can if I get the wires in properly. Again, I'm kind of rushing here because obviously when I'm filming, um, yeah, the camera is right in front of my face. Again, it's my excuse. I'm sticking to it. But there we go. Um, yeah, love how this has come out. Say so nice and simple, but I think, yeah, very effective. 
Well, the one thing I'm going to do right at the end here, yeah, these sort of, well, um, nails, I guess, would have, would have kept the, uh, the holder onto the, uh, the wall. I'm just going to paint those in a colour. And I'm just going to go with the, uh, the copper chrome metal, um, again from Green Staff World, uh, just to make them sort of stand out and again look like the thing has been sort of nailed onto the wall. Um, and yeah, absolutely love how the whole thing's come out. And there we go guys, the first item made for my, well, my workshop studio gaming room. Uh, obviously I need to get the gaming room now. Uh, but yeah, love how it come out. As I say, the fact that I can turn something, well, from a little candle in there into, well, a bigger candle. So yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do the walls, but I want to have the walls the same as this. And I will be making old, like, doors as well. Guys, I've got so many ideas of things I want to do. I've wanted to get a studio for a good two, three years. Um, and I say the fact I will be moving hopefully soon-ish, maybe. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get a garage, a workshop, or a big shed. Um, and yeah, I'm going to kid it out like such a kid. Uh, so yeah, keep a, an eye out. Say, so I'll be doing lots of videos soon. Well, fairly soon, hopefully, on some bigger life-size items. Um, and yeah, one is definitely going to be me making some armor pieces, um, shields and swords, just to sort of decorate the room I want to go into. Um, and yeah, definitely making, say, well, somehow, uh, old wooden doors and the walls. So yeah, I can't wait. But again, we've got to start somewhere and start somewhere small. Again, I can't make things too big just yet because I really don't have any spare room. Uh, but starting off with a nice sort of... Uh, well, wall, candle, holder, whatever a thing is called. Um, yeah, just been perfect. So thank you so much to Eligu again for sending me their Saturn IV Ultra. Uh, lovely printer. And I say, very different the way that the, uh, the build, um, the resin vat moves up and down. Very bizarre. Um, got to be a good reason for it. I'm not too sure what it is, but the thing works perfectly. And for Syria Tech and their white resin, uh, because... Yeah, I love the fact that you can print stuff out and make things flash and glow through it, which is just awesome. Right, I'm going to stop talking now because otherwise I will carry on waffling and this video is obviously already long already, uh, but it's going to go even longer if I just keep rambling on. So anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around to the end. Uh, much appreciated. If you can drop a like, that'd be awesome. Leave comments, fantastic. Um, subscribe if you're not already subscribed and if you can share this video with anyone anywhere would be just awesome as I say I would love to end this year even though we are at the very beginning still uh, on 100k subscribers and I can only do that with your help because at the moment it's going to be touch and go wherever I get there uh, with your help sharing a video be much appreciated anyway enough of that waffle <laughs> cheers guys you'll take care and yeah I'll see you in the next one when I'm building making well who knows what? <laughs> anyway, cheers guys. Bye for now.